It's time for the Fort Mill Magazine Podcast. It's October 10th, 2012. I'm Tracy Roman. And I'm Emily Wyatt. We have another fabulous podcast today. Every week is a fabulous podcast. Yeah, they just get more and more fabulous, they I do. think. Right? Mm hmm. So, um, what's the latest in Emily's world? I'm tired. <laughs> that seems to be an overriding theme lately. Pretty much. Um, I think it's just kind of nonstop socializing for me because socializing is very, um, I like doing it, but it's exhausting to me. Right. I think it is to Keith as well. But my brother and his girlfriend were in town. From uh, Colorado, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they both work at um, on Bre- in Breckenridge. So, yeah, they were in town thir- um, for almost a week. And they have kind of a fabulous life. They work for a resort or something, like a ski resort. Yeah, so they work really hard for like eight months out of the year. And then they're... Unemployed's not the right word because sometimes somebody will come through in the middle of summer in Denver, but not really. So they get at least four months off, and those four months they just travel. Oh, that must be awful for them. Yeah, Joey was like, this is my, we've got three vacations in a month. And I was like, oh, that sounds horrible. Like he went to (laughs) Vegas, and then he's coming here. And then when we go to the Bahamas, the night before they get to the Bahamas, they have a layover in New York City. To play. To play. So that sounds really rough for them. (laughs) And rough for you as well. Right. Miss going on vacation in a week. Yeah, I'm excited. To the Bahamas. Super excited. That's wonderful. Well, I wish I could go. (laughs) But I can't. (laughs) So I'll be sad here without you. Uh, But we have um, Derek Wilder, who is the area manager of Playball, coming to speak with us today. Yes, we do. He also is a contributor. Yes, he's, he's been a great writer. contributing for quite some time, mm-hmm. and uh, beautiful, beautiful writer. I, I think that I probably enjoy his writing style the most because um, it's so descriptive. Yeah. He, he really is very poetic. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's fun to read. It's, it gives us... I actually like reading his stuff. Not that I don't like reading our other contributors, but... They're all fabulous. They are. But it's it's very entertaining. Yeah. And and he usually has something involved with his daughter, yeah. Taylor, and she's adorable. She's four and a quarter. Yeah. She's She'll tell you. She's too cute. <laughs> just too cute. Mm. But yeah, so I guess we should talk about our... Sponsor. Sponsors. Our sponsor today is Miller Street Dance Academy. We love them. We do. They are over there um, in Baxter on Market Street, and they have a second location as well in um, what's considered South Charlotte, Providence Road. Yeah. They're very, very active. They're very nice people. Yeah. I mean, these um, the, the students... Are phenomenal because the instruction is so yeah. well done, mm-hmm. and um, they have competition teams at both locations that actually compete at diff- or they're in different. Um, I don't know what you call it circles. You know, like how they have these competitions that are you know all over the state, right. and sometimes they go outside of the state. Right, but it's like a circuit of right. competitions that lead up to a national competition. Well, I believe that they actually have both of the dance academies go to different circuits so That's they're great. not overwhelming the um the the uh one the yeah, the competition. Right. They're not competing against each other. Right. Well, their um location in Fort Mill is 967 Market Street. Their phone number is 803-396-5299. The location in South Charlotte is 11532 Providence Road, 704-889-8637. And their website is www.millerstreetdanceacademy.com. We have Derek Wilder with us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. 
Great. Well, um, we have enjoyed your stories for quite some time. You've been a regular contributor to Fort Mill Magazine, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a great pleasure for me. Um, my articles tend to fall under uh, undescribable, I think, category. <laughs> I, I typically get my inspiration, I think, from my uh, my family, my kids that I work with, and, and my daughter, Taylor, who's pretty much interwoven into most of them. And we're so glad she is because we love Tay. She's super cute. She is adorable. And um, every time, time we have a contributors meeting, we call them um, the CNC meeting for Celebrate and Collaborate. Um, we always have the pleasure of seeing her, and we enjoy. She's got so much charisma for such a little person. She will She will tell you now that she is four and a quarter. She's very proud of that. So. <laughs> that little girl is super sharp. Like, she doesn't miss anything. And one of the things that I really love about following you on Facebook is you always have, like, these little Tay sayings or things that she has, like, little statements that she's made that day about just random stuff, and it is so cute. Yeah, I've tend to collect them. Um, I try to be a little bit organized about it, so I probably have close to 200 of them now, just strange. And some of them are incredibly creative and, and fascinating things that, as adults, we wouldn't be able to, to think of. Right. Um, we had something upside down the other day, and she said, Daddy, Daddy, it's upside down. I said, yeah, well, we need to turn it upside up, uh-huh. which, of course, makes That's more cute. sense than right side up. That's and, uh, right. So it's things like that that I, I try to remember, and who knows, maybe one day those will be culminated into some sort of anthology or book. Oh, I would love that. Um, A lot of people know you from Playball because you've been very active. You're the area manager for Playball. Tell us a little bit, for those who aren't familiar with Playball, what it's all about. Sure. Yes, we're uh, an international child development organization. Sounds kind of fancy. Um, Out of South Africa, and I brought it here six years ago now to the Carolinas. And uh, in that world, I'm known as Coach Derek. And um, although I carry around balls and hoops and bean bags and things, I tell people my main goal is not to teach sports to children. My main, our, our main objective is to teach them life skills and build their self confidence. Um, we have a saying of building confidence through competence. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, instead of the classroom, our method of teaching is on the court. And those balls and the sports and the games are sort of the tools we have in our toolbox to instill life skills such as cooperation, teamwork, respect, kindness, honesty, things that you would hope would be the positive outcome from um, from a program like that. Mm-hmm. We definitely try to complement what's in the classroom. It's a very structured environment and a very creative environment. One of my personal goals is to try to get as many children active as possible. The little sports superstars, they're always going to want to go. If you have a ball or something, they're always going to want to throw it and go play. But we also have the little poets and authors and publishers mm-hmm. who may not be, or, or the kids who are more shy, who may not just want to go out when they see a ball and automatically take to the court and want to throw it through the hoop. So one of the ways we, uh, a couple of ways we do that is to make it a very low pressure environment where all the kids get a chance to participate and by adding a lot of creativity to it. So instead of learning to dribble a basketball, maybe they're learning to make apple juice. They hold the apple in their arms. They drop the apple. They use their smasher to bounce it three times and then squeeze out the apple juice. So every kid wants to make apple juice, but maybe not every kid wants to learn to dribble a basketball. It sounds a little boring. So right. that creative element, I think, is one of the important things of getting boys and girls, I say, of all abilities mm-hmm. um, into the program and help um, combat what we see today as one of the sort of the um, common issues of childhood obesity that we hear coming up. Um, One statistic I heard from the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, who estimate life expectancy is that this current generation might be the first to where the life expectancy might tick down a little bit. They've never seen that happen, and they think it might be partially result of all of the side effects of children being obese who are then more likely to be overweight as adults. Right. That's That's so sad. Yeah, it's very sad. When I was a kid, we'd go out and play in the in the, in the yard, climb, uh, play street football until you know either our parents called us home, or or it got dark. My uh, my mom had a especially embarrassing whistle that she'd use, so <laughs> each of us on the block knew by what type of call who whose parent it was, and it was time for us to go home. But uh, because of the current social structure and safety issues, kids just can't go out in their neighborhood and play until dark anymore. 
Well, and, and too, it, it's they've got technology now that entertains them, mm -hmm. and then junk food. I mean, we as Americans eat so much more junk food than we did even when I was a kid. I mean, you know, McDonald's was a a, a normal thing for us, but right. It was usually reserved for Friday evening when my mom got off work. That was junk food night. And there, like, it wasn't like a, oh, we'll stop at McDonald's every day on the way yeah, home. Yeah, for lunch every day. Right. Kind of thing. And part of that is our, our culture of people being so busy, two, two parents working, if yeah. there's a two parent household, that is just convenient and, and quick. Um, mm -hmm. That, in addition to the por portions, seem to have been getting larger, larger. and larger. It's like and the Cheesecake Factory of, approach to things. Yes. Yeah. More um, processed things, because mm -hmm. I, I know, um, you know, my mom always made spaghetti sauce from scratch. And a lot of people still do, but it's more convenient for people to just get the jar of sauce. Yeah. Which has got tons of sugar, sugar. and salt in it. Yeah. But in, in full disclosure, while I do a lot with kids on the on the physical activity side, I have to say that I, I eat my share fair share of, of junk food. So <laughs> <laughs> I, Yeah, but at least I, you're working it off. But yes, yeah, so I, I do stay fairly active, in it, and I'm probably blessed with decent genes. Um, right. Because I uh, I pretty much can eat what I want and, and don't gain don't gain any weight. So right, right. I'm, I'm lucky there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a typical play ball involvement. In school, it happens during school hours? Typically, there's a couple of ways that we offer it. Um, one is during the school day where we're integrated into their curriculum mm -hmm. and all of the kids come through. It's sort of like a, um, a life skills-based PE program. And I should say we mostly focus on um, young children. Mm -hmm. Our, we have a curriculum that starts at two years old and goes up through um, elementary school. But a lot of what we do are with the preschools and daycares in the area. Um, kids come to us once a week, two year olds for 30 minutes typically, and then three and up, they come for 45 minutes once a week. So it can be offered, I said, as curriculum during the school day, or sometimes we offer it as an enrichment program where their parents pay extra. And that could be either during the school or say at release time where they, if they want to stay an extra hour, they can do that. Right. But you go to the facility. They go don't to, go. Correct. We go to the facility and right. try and try to work around the schedules of schools and parents um, our business is portable. One of the, the nice things about it, both from a um, business aspect, because our overhead is low, we don't have a gym, and from a convenience aspect. I even have one class now that runs in the backyard of a, of a mom. She had a, a homeschooling group in her, oh. in her neighborhood, and they wanted to integrate some physical activity. That's great. And so we literally go, and uh, sometimes they rotate, so we'll have it in different parents' backyards every week. And so wherever we have some space that's safe and big enough for the kids, we, we can come do it. So I that's hadn't worked out really that. well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. It's yeah. like peak. Homeschooling is one of the big, I mean, there's a lot of homeschool groups here, so we do a, a few homeschool groups. That's a, a, a nice market for us, and it, and it works out well for them because they can then have a, a PE type program right. integrated into their schooling. That's wonderful. I, mm -hmm. I really hadn't thought of that. Um, so if there's other people out there or schools that um, want to learn more about play ball, do you want to share sure. the website? Sure. Our website is www.usaplayball, all one word, dot com. Okay. And um, most of the uh, people know me. It's, it's pretty easy. My, my email address, if you want to contact me directly, is coachderek at yahoo.com. And um, we've, uh, we've done pretty well. We've been here, like I said, six years now. And uh, as the area manager, one of my roles is to help develop other franchises. As a franchise business, we're in a... Now in 13 countries, we've been doing this over 25 years and started in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We teach about a quarter million children a week and now have a half a dozen franchises in this area. So it's, it's been growing. We serve wow. probably 50 schools or so. That's wonderful. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Miller Street Dance Academy. They have two locations, one in Fort Mill at 967 Market Street their phone number is 803-396-5299. Their second location is in South Charlotte at 11532 Providence Road, 704-889-8637. Their website is www.millerstreetdanceacademy.com. And now back to the show. Now, that's not the only thing that you do. You recently started up a new project called The Reading Giraffe. Tell us how that got started and what's involved in it. Sure. Um, I kind of 
lumped that under my silver linings approach of these, these last couple of years of, of my life. Um, I had a couple of changes go on and mainly was becoming a, a single father to, to Tay when she was about 18 months. And I had a couple of goals early on, which was uh, to spend time with her because I, I do believe that's the most important thing you can give, give a child. And running play ball, the most fortunate thing about that was it allowed me to have a flexible schedule mm -hmm. so that I could spend a lot of time with her. And the other thing is I decided, um, besides being physically active and being in nature, which are two of my passions, is that she was, we were going to spend a lot of time in bookstores and libraries and reading books. Mm -hmm. So we started, uh, we started doing that. I spent a lot of late afternoons on the carpet you know, with the sun coming through the windows reading with her and got to be <laughs> very uh, comfortable getting my way around the Fort Mill, Fort Mill Library and the local Barnes & Noble and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a writer, right, I've written for m magazines and newspapers, I started reading a lot of the children's picture books. And while some were brilliant, I thought some were, were, were less so. Right. And I thought, wow, this, this should be something I could sort of target. So from there came a desire to start writing children's stories. And I've, uh, I just wrote them for Taylor to read, read at night, basically. And then from there, I started uh, going into her school when she turned three and reading to them because mm -hmm. I thought it was important. And they were looking for volunteers. And I, I started reading some of my own stories integrated in. And they seemed to like them. But from my play ball background with the physical activity and the, the creativeness, after we'd read a story, I'd always play some games related to the story. And mm -hmm. the teachers were, were kind of blown away that I could, I could somehow tie the game that they were playing to this book. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we, we started doing arts and crafts related to the book. So all of those things sort of culminated into me saying, wow, there's, there's a lot of enrichment programs out there for children. There's always sports programs, there's art, and there's music, but there's literally was nothing on literacy. Right. And while they do they get that in the preschools, we th I think there's nothing more important or, or nothing that can affect a child's education more than getting them to love to read. So that was our goal, not necessarily to teach grammar or spelling, but just to get them exciting, fun books that they're, they'll go home and ask to read a book mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, sit on the computer or, or, or um, play a game or watch a cartoon network. Right. And, uh, and I think we've, we've started pulling that off. I'm, I've started in schools the same um, format as play ball where we go into schools once a week. And I've started in two schools just this year. Okay. And it's, it's going well. The, the kids enjoy it. One of the things we do um, is, is a, in, in, in addition to reading is have the children at the end of class, we'll take one of the books and I'll, I'll ask some leading questions and get them to put their inputs. Hopefully we get some cool things like Tay says that are unexpected. And from those, I take that and we call it build a book. So I, I make their own book and send that home as the weekly part of the weekly newsletter to the parents. So they get to see a book that their children wrote each week. That's very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's been one of the really nice feedbacks I've gotten because parents, when they sign up for enrichment programs, a lot of times they don't really get much feedback. Right. Um, so that's one of the things they guarantee, you know, really wanted to do was try to take it, what we do that once a week and, and help, hopefully it'll be reinforced in the home by saying, here's the books we looked at. Here's a story they wrote. Here's the theme that we did this week and maybe find some other books or stories, just make up things based on that theme. Right. And then when the parent sees that book that you made, it ties it all together. And then they, you know, the, that encourages the child to interact and share that with the parent then, right? Sure. Sure. They, um, I just will sometimes just give one sentence if we're doing a shark. You know, if I were a shark, I would and just go around and get some amazing things. And then I just kind of fill in the blanks and we have a, a very uh, maybe uh, ambitious to call it a book. But we have a story that we can send <laughs> home to the, to the parents at that point. Right. So Reading Giraffe is also involved with uh, Anne Springs Close Greenway and tying in your love, your passion for nature. So there's an event happening this weekend, right? Yes, ma'am. It's called a, a story walk. And it's a brilliant and simple idea that I wish I would have thought of. <laughs> it's basically combining physical activity, nature, and reading. In this case, what you do is you, you take a, a children's picture book, you rip it apart, you laminate the pages, and you post them at intervals along a trail. So as the as the families go out there... As they're walking along, they actually can read a book at the same time as, as hiking the trail. So it's a, a wonderful combination of, uh, of some of my passions. So I spoke to, uh, to the Greenway in Springs and um, offered up one of my books called The Counting Trees to, 
to be the first story walk project. Mm -hmm. And they, they've been great to work with. They're, they're, they're always looking for, for new ideas and are very nice to partner with. And uh, so we decided to make the first one tied into their fall festival this weekend. Okay. Uh, it's going to be Saturday at noon and at 2. And basically those are guided tours. You can go out and anytime during the festival after this weekend and, and, and take the story walk. But this one I'm actually going to lead the tour and read the book to the kids and then afterwards, we're going to have a craft project where the kids can build their own counting tree. Um, that's one of the first books I wrote for Taylor, and because math is is one of my uh, one of my joys. I, I was a computer science uh, major and statistics minor in college, so I'm quite You're a bit brainiac. removed from that <laughs> at this point. So that um, makes you kind of a nerd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was a golfer, so you tie that was before Tiger Woods Day, so you tie those in, and, and yeah, that was pretty much me. But um, I, I, and math is one of those things which begins with counting that you think all kids should, it's so valuable for them to learn, but not all kids are little mathematicians. So what I try to do with counting trees is tie in nature and poetry. And most of, a lot of the books I write are, are poems and, uh, and hopefully that inspired kids to, to connect better and, and count. Right. So, um, so yeah, if they can make it out, it should be a beautiful weekend. And, um, there's a lot of other events at the, at the Greenway that they have for this fall festival. Is there um, a charge to participate? Not in, in this story walk, but you do have to pay to get into the festival. And right. then once you're in, this is one of the three free activities that they have there. Right. And they'll have it clearly indicated, like where you meet and all that kind of stuff for it. Yes, we will. We're actually going out to put up the trail, um, I think this afternoon. Okay. And, um, and I'm sending out some flyers and then we'll have a, a gathering point at noon right at the at the trailhead, basically. Okay. And then after um, Saturday's event, will those story walk pictures still be up on the trail ongoing? They will, but what we're probably going to do, the initial idea was to tie it into the preschool. Um, my daughter ha is at the preschool, so I had a, a vested interest there. Sure. And uh, the preschool in the Greenway is, is at the complex, and right behind there is is a trail. So we, uh, we're going to use that and put that up there probably after the, the festival so that it'll move. And the idea is if this takes hold is we have several other stories that we might start populating various and maybe tie them to seasons, tie them to events that are going on. But one of the things I wanted to do with, uh, with the counting trees is my, my stepdaughter, Laura Jacques is a, uh, she's a junior at Fort Mill high and an aspiring photographer. Mm -hmm. So we went out one day this summer and took photos all along the trail. And uh, so those photos became the backdrop for the illustrations for the book. So as you're, as you're hiking and reading the book, if you look closely at the, at the illustrations, those are actually photographs of the, uh, of the Greenway itself. And uh, didn't we feature her mm -hmm. photo? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so them. the article. In the fall issue. Yes, and, and there's an article in the fall issue that I, I described the process in the in Probably my favorite photo from Laura was was the backdrop to that article. So it was a um, great shot. Yeah, it, it's, she's very talented, and now she has a magazine credit and a and a book credit. So <laughs> there you go. She's building her portfolio. That's right. She's she's got it all happening already. That's wonderful. Now um, you have written several short stories, and you recently found out that you're getting published. Yes, um, one of my first books I read called "A Bag Full of Holes." Um, has been picked up by Me Genius, which is an, an ebook publisher, mm -hmm. and I entered a contest there. And as a result of that, I ended up getting offered a contract. And um, we just signed it this last week, and so we're in the early stages of um, editing. And then we'll do the illustration process. It's kind of a still that's sort of the first step. It's a long process from manuscript to, to final book on a picture book, obviously, because the the illustrations have to uh, have to really tie into the story and. Since this book is about nothing, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, the bag full of holes, as the name implies, a, a little girl finds a bag filled not with rocks or balls, but literally with holes and decides what does she want to do with them. Mm -hmm. And she decides that uh, uh, probably an adult might want to keep them if there was a treasure, but she decides they should be shared. So she takes those holes and makes gifts for, for everybody. Right. Um, so sort of a, a Zen feel of making something of, of nothing. And uh, I have to uh, give credit to Taylor for for that one as well because we were we were driving home one night, and she uh, had one of her rare donuts. I think it was one of the first times she had it, and 
now anytime we she now recognizes when we're driving up 521 if she sees the Krispy Kreme oh no light mm-hmm. on it's like, I don't know how Girl she also reads my own heart. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing how they connect with, with those things um clever marketing yes. and she was uh she was eating and she finished it from, from the back seat she said daddy i ate the whole thing i ate the ring part and the whole part uh, so aww. that night I, I stayed up pretty much all night and, and wrote probably it's 90 percent of what the book is now just from that idea so whatever happens from it i definitely have to give her the, the credit right right yeah she she has clever little things that she comes up <laughs> with and i think it's beautiful how you feed off of it And with your poetic way, you turn that into these wonderful children books. And um, you've got three that you three or four that you brought. Can Mm -hmm. you just like mention um, the titles? You've already talked about um, a bag full of holes, but what are the other ones that you brought with you? Um, I also have one, uh, probably her favorite and my favorite is called Daisy Chain. And it basically ties in an unrelated series of events. And uh, and natural elements, and, and starts out with a gentle, and the next verse begins with breeze. So they get to predict what's coming next. Mm. So it heads through a breeze and a squirrel and um, a hawk and a rainbow, and somehow ends up back where it started. Which is what I try to do with my stories. I like a, a circular nature, sort of a circle of life, and a simplified version. When I was a daisy, I bloomed in a garden with all of my friends and watched my petals drift away on a gentle breeze. When I was a breeze, I made petals dance in a white ballet, and they were gathered up by a lively squirrel. When I was a squirrel, I built a comfy nest in a mighty oak and dropped an acorn on a jumpy, lumpy frog. When I was a frog, I sang out my croaky song each day and hopped, plop, right onto the middle of a round lily pad. When I was a little, when I was a lily pad, I sat on my pond like a giant green pizza, and my roots were tickled by a shiny. I think the fish. best children's books can can do a lot with with a few words, and that's the challenge um, that makes them easy to write because there's not you know all of mine are 500 words or less, but also can be a, a challenge to write. I usually write them when I get an inspiration, like overnight it seems, and then take about a year to edit them from there. <laughs> Editing. Mm. Emily and I love ed- editing, don't we? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've spent the night changing the to a to and to, you know, just one word here or there, or especially when they're rhymes because the uh, it is a, an art form and, and I never studied it in school again. In, in, in my statistics and computer science classes, I didn't have a lot of poetry thrown in there. <laughs> um, but my mom did remind me once that when we were in high school, the, a guidance counselor, we had a meeting about they were looking to future and, and the guidance counselor recommended that I go into poetry. And I didn't even know that till she, she told me that, uh, when I was getting into these books, she was, remember we met when you were in high school and I said, that's really? what you should do. I said, no, I didn't think of that. But, um, considered I was a uh, technology consultant, my first career, some people couldn't understand, you know, how could you leave that to, <laughs> yeah. I, I traveled around, I visited 20 something countries, you know, I had a nice expense account. I had some nice cars and mm-hmm. how could you leave that to play with kids was how they put it as well. I'm actually leaving it to hopefully make a difference. And, uh, right. it, it sounds fairly high minded, but it was as simple as that. Um, and that was actually a result of Laura, my, my stepdaughter at the time. Um, the photographer was really partially her doing. We sent her to play ball in Florida when she was six mm-hmm. and she came back and loved it. And I was maybe looking to change careers and, uh, went and, and met the owner. And within two months, got out of consulting and got rid of my suits and ties and became coach Derek. Right. And uh, I wasn't very good at it at first. So I'm glad, but I'm glad I, <laughs> I knew I loved it, uh, but I didn't have a lot of training. I didn't have my own children. Um, and, uh, it took me a while to it, but I'm glad I, I've stuck with it because it's been over 10 years now. Right. And you're still evolving <laughs> and still doing hopefully new, new projects and, and new things. And, um, have been been fortunate they all sort of revolve around kids so there is a sort of a commonality there that i i've tried to keep and uh and, and again with the goal of spending time with taylor this was another way to 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 move forward in a career and, and write things again initially was just to write things for her to 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 read to her at night that hopefully she would like right and it uh, sort of evolved i have um one of my other latest book called best friends talks about a boy and a girl who are best friends as kids and just goes along telling all how they're alike, 
but also slightly different. Mm -hmm. And then it, uh, it's a, a story of inclusion because um, at the end of the book, hopefully you've, you've visualized um, these children and what they are and see them playing together. And you realize that the little girl is, is, um, is out there playing and the, and the boy is also racing along, but the boy is actually in a wheelchair. So right. that's sort of the final one. I've had some support from Special Olympics. They like the idea and such. So I'm hoping that will be one of the uh, the books. I'm now writing another one, Inclusion, that works on um, color, uh, different races and colors as opposed to right. to potential disabilities. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So, well, um, is there a website for Reading Giraffe? No, there's not. It's <laughs> Reading Giraffe was, was such something that was put together very quickly. I mean, I've, right. I've put together flyers and I've developed the curriculum and maybe not the best business strategy, but to me, that was the most important thing was getting the curriculum right and, and picking out the books. So all of my energy um, went into that. And I was very fortunate to have a built in sort of client base because the, the schools knew me from mm -hmm. play ball. And when I proposed the idea, I, I really didn't have to do any marketing or anything. They, they, some of them said yes right away. So um, there will be eventually, um, cause I'd like to make it an interactive portion that would allow, again, give another avenue for parents to interact with what their kids are doing, doing during class, post some of those stories and, um, maybe have something where the kids could get online and start writing their own stories as well. Um, sort of like we do in class. Um, my, uh, only so many hours in the day. And I think my friends and, uh, and, and family and colleagues are, I'm sort of famous for sending the 3 a.m. emails and, uh, <laughs> But again, it's, it's, it's a matter of priorities. I think a lot of times when I put Taylor down, I'll end up reading to her and falling asleep and I wake up a few hours later and then do my work from you know, 11 to three is, is one of my shifts it seems. So I end up right. having two very long naps uh, overnight quite a few, quite a bit of times. So. Right. Well, that's the, the true mark of an artisan. People, creative minded people are, are known for doing that sort of thing. So yeah. sort of when I get something in my head, I kind of have to yeah. do it and get it, the writing thing. That's why I end up writing most of my stories in one sitting, at least the, the first draft. Right. Um, and then I, I have, I'm in a couple of writing groups and there's one guy who's written like a, a five volume series of a few hundred pages each. And I'm like, there's, I don't even know how you come up with that many words. And he looks at my short little books and he's like, I don't know how you come up with a whole story. And so it's a few words. So I think it's just a matter of what, of what strikes you as a, on that, on that creative side of things. Right. Well, um, each and every one of them, um, the, the stories that um, will hopefully be children's books very soon, they're all just lovely, uh, very descriptive. And um, and even, you know, the, the articles that you provide for our publication every quarter, they're so poetically written. And we really enjoy, when, when it's time for us to edit them, <laughs> we really enjoy reading them. Mm -hmm. And they re always require very little um, efforts on our part. So we definitely appreciate you. And we're so pleased that you were able to join us today and share all the wonderful programs that, that you're involved with. And just tell folks again, if they want to find out more about play ball or they want to learn about uh, reading giraffe or um, any of your publications, would you like them to email you? Is that the best way? Yeah, that's probably the best way. And again, um, my email address is coach Derek at yahoo.com and Derek is spelled D E R I C K one R. And, um, I always love to hear from, from people and I, and I share one of the things I do that a lot of authors don't is I do share with, especially with parents. I kind of have a, uh, an unofficial editorial board that I'll share my, um, pre-publication with and, and get feedback. Um, it, I think it helps me. Um, uh, I, I've, I've shared them with directors at schools and teachers and, and parents and they provide some wonderful, wonderful feedback and, and tweaks here and there where a little change can make can make a very big difference. So sure. um, that's why I'm also in the middle of making a reading draft, a not for profit. So I'd like to to get more involved with the community, and, and the Greenway is one of those one of those avenues. Um, sort of the first one to to get out there and and touch base with kids, and, and again with the goal of just build, building a desire to read. You know, right. wanting them to go open a book as, as much as they want to jump on, <laughs> jump on the iPad or whatever right. the latest technology might be. Right. That's wonderful. Well, thanks again. And we will have your website and your email address, um, attached to this podcast so people can just click on it and you have a Facebook or a Twitter. I'm on Facebook as, as myself. Right. And, uh, that's mostly the, uh, the 
travails of Tay, it, think, it seems. And, <laughs> and those are awesome. And uh, and then I, I do post, um, I sort of mix and match because I do post my events that I'm doing and the articles that I write. So that is a way they can follow what's what's going on. Okay, so we'll post that and share that one as well. But no Twitter. But no Twitter. Okay. That's okay. But, yeah. Not everybody tweets. <laughs> that'll be, that'll be, that's on my to-dos list. Right. <laughs> very good. Thanks again, Derek. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Well, that was very informative. I didn't know so much about uh, the play ball. Yeah. Like how it all plays out. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's very lucky to have such an involved dad. She really is. You know, I, I think when I think about um, Tay as she gets older, I mean, because he really is a hands-on dad and he spends so much quality time with her. Mm-hmm. And the kid is so brilliant already. Mm-hmm. She's going to be like a phenomenal person <laughs> when she grows up. I really think so. So, um, but just to have any kid involved in the play ball or the reading giraffe would yeah. be a huge benefit. So I really hope that um, if if our listeners haven't you know heard about it before that they'll investigate further and right it's great contact derek yeah so that's pretty much it for our show for our show and again we want to thank miller street dance academy where um they do phenomenal things with their little dancers over there Mm -hmm. cultivating lots of fine dancers and they are located in fort mill at 967 Market Street. Their phone number at that location is 803-396-5299. Be sure and let them know that we sent you. Yep. And they also have their second location in South Charlotte, which is 11532 Providence Road. And that phone number is 704-889-8637. They um, have a website, MillerStreetDanceAcademy.com. Check it out. And if you want to listen to old podcasts or future podcasts or see what we've got going on, you can always go to our Facebook, which is at Fort Mill Mag. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Twitter, which is also at Fort Mill Mag, or you can go to fortmillmagazine.com. That's right. And there's uh, blogs and previous articles. All kinds of stuff on there. Everything you need to know. And don't forget to check out our events calendar. Exactly. And post on our events calendar. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Ciao.